ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm Rajiv Mundekar, uh, representing uh, Proise Powertrain Innovations uh, Fab Limited uh, based in Bangalore. Uh, to let you introduce myself, uh, I am basically an entrepreneur for the last uh, 30 years. I have run a gear manufacturing industry for over 20 years, machine tool joint venture from Germany, and then I've been for some time in the manufacturing business of Athens as well. Um, and renewable energy in terms of generating the hybrid uh, power plant, which is basically a tri energy plant that sometime later time permits have to come to. Well, we are basically a company today with uh, a venture uh, coming out with this product for automotive uh, centrifugal supercharger. Um, Well, explaining about us, uh, the venture is about the basic commercialization of this innovation, which is the automotive uh, supercharging system, which is uh, you know capable of getting retrofitted to an in-use vehicle and as well as getting adapted to a new vehicle uh, to the OEMs. Uh, who we are? We are basically, as I said, a company based in Bangalore. We are a team of uh, eight uh, strong. Um, you know, founders who are sort of uh, promoting this uh, venture. In terms of experience and expertise, we come from varied experience from the automotive, machine tools, aerospace, and the, you know, public relations. One of the director who actually has been the president of various, uh, you know, um, forums like uh, FKCCI, CASI, etc. Uh, we are in absolute uh, line with the uh, the 17 sustainable goals that the United Nations has set, amongst that is the 13th goal is the climate action and uh, our venture absolutely falls in line to sort of address the fuel efficiency and then the emission control of the vehicles. The vehicles that when I say we are mostly addressing the four wheelers post uh, one liter right up to a 12 liter engine at the moment. Uh, this is the team that we have uh, uh, Wing Commander Satish is along with me here, who has been in the Indian Air Force for 20 years. He's been an aeronautical engineer and uh, in terms of uh, management and maintenance of the uh, Jaguar uh, aircraft. Uh, Dinesh is the former uh, president of FKCCI, KSIA. He's been my good, uh, he's been an entrepreneur and a good friend over the last 25 years of mine. We've been working together. Gopal Krishna is an ex HMT gentleman who is now. Um, the uh, ASQ uh, representative in uh, Karnataka has a master black belt of Six Sigma and he is an auditor of uh, ASQ in uh, Karnataka today. He also consults a lot of uh, multinational companies on uh, business excellence, quality management and uh, you know the quality systems etc. Uh, Nisil of course has an MS from Germany, he has been an ex Bosch in the automotive electronics. Uh, he brings along with him the latest, uh, you know, the uh, powertrain technology uh, electronics to the world. Uh, Mrs. Gudrun Gudike has been, uh, um, uh, you know, marketing and uh, the uh, um, prof uh, professional in terms of the international markets, especially for the machine tools. She has handled the global marketing uh, uh, department of a company called Gudike with Cybushinan, where. Uh, these, uh, in this place, we uh, even I was associated with uh, that's where our credit comes from. Uh, I was associated with this company when I had a small stint of about three and a half years in Germany, and that's where the genesis of this product as well comes from. Uh, Sharash now is at USA, he's incorporated uh, Proise USA uh, to actually promote this particular product. Uh, that's a brief part of our team. Um, when I said the goal number 13 is about the climate action, take, take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. Now, if you consider the transport uh, sector, actually they can, uh, you know, in terms of contributing to this particular uh, goal uh, for the good air quality, green environment, better health and fuel saving, uh, the only thing that is available for them today is a very significant reduction in terms of exhaust emissions and fuel saving. 
So when you look at this, I think we are left with the, again two tracks, that's the new vehicles, which so would now come on, and the in-use vehicles that we have, that's the biggest minutes that we have on hand today in the world, may it be India or anywhere across the globe, that's the biggest challenge that we have to how do we address this problem. So the solution that we propose, as Proy said, uh, the design and development of this particular product has an extensive legacy of or I think since 1997-98 when I actually developed this first version of the product while I was in Germany and uh, we did the prototype building and all that. Uh, just to come to this point as to what's the difference that it delivers, what's the kind of the value that it delivers is currently if you see all the vehicles that we have, you, you hear them as turbocharged, uh, you know mostly uh, or otherwise if they are just naturally aspirated. Diesel engines are turbocharged, typically the gasoline engines are not turbocharged for a technical reason, but if you will see that when you drive in the city at lower speeds and the lower uh, RPMs of the engine, I mean whenever you drive in the city, normally your turbocharger doesn't kick in at all. The very fact that the turbocharger has been implemented in IC engine is to address this problem. That's to cut down the emissions and give you a better torque and a power while also trying to uh, seek the advantage of a better fuel economy. Yes, that's true, but when it operates. So, 85% of the time, for, as far as the entire statistics, which is available on board, uh, the domains, uh, you do not have the turbocharger kicking in. That's what people call it as a turbo lag. And that's where the biggest problem, if you see the exhaust, I'm sure all of you have driven behind the trucks, buses, BMTC buses, or even so for the latest diesel vehicles, you can observe it today as well, or tomorrow when you really have to see this. Just as when you start, stop at the traffic lights, and when you start, when somebody kicks in the accelerator, that's when you find a big puff of smoke that's coming out. That's the, re the reason is that this turbocharger doesn't kick in at that time, and it's got a very inefficient burning in the chambers, and that's why you have a uh, combustion, uh, that black smoke coming out, which in effect is actually contributing to 60% or plus even of the total emissions that we measure from the regular exhaust tail pipes. And that's exactly where we address. <coughs> Supercharger kicks in just when you start at idling, we're on, straight away from there on until you actually go to the higher RPMs and higher speeds. Supercharger is in effect absolutely at its highest efficiency, and that's where you cut down on the exhaust emissions. We cut down close to 70%, that's beyond 60% of the smoke, particulate matter, NOx and the black carbon. And while this is being done, you actually get the torque enhanced. I'm sure when you drive, you know how people must be driving mostly the manual, the guys who drive the automotive portions don't realize it, but definitely the people who drive with the manual transmission, you know how many numbers of times that you shift the gears. We measured this six years ago. A two hour track in Bangalore took about 118 times shifting of gears. We measured it just last year. A 40 minutes drive just in the uh, west of Power Road zone, not even in the central district, it took us 93 times. A gap of six years in Bangalore traffic has already announced the requirement of, for you to change because that's a stop and go kind of a traffic that you are left with. And the kind of stress that is induced because of this is tremendous. We did a sort of a survey the, uh, in the Bangalore market talking to a lot of Ola drivers, Uber drivers. They said, sir, I think we interviewed about 18 or 19 of them, and 12 of them were absolutely on the same page, saying, sir, if I do not carry only me today evening home, I'm sure I'm not back to duty tomorrow. On my left feet is absolutely so much so stressed, and I can't really drive all along with this point of a tra traffic in the uh, peak cars. So that's the kind of effect that we have in terms of health, and that this resolves. Once you supercharge, we have done the exercise again, we have cut down close to almost about 75% of shifting of gears. While you are in fourth gear, you are as good as in second. While you are in fifth, you are as good as in second. So that's the kind of effect that this brings in and the kind of value uh, this brings to the market. Now, we have done a good amount of tests, on-road tests. While I was already in Germany, we did on a couple of Mercs, BMWs, Saab, Fiat, 
and the sort of a collective sort of results that we got was this that we were able to address fuel economy, we were able to cut down on the exhaust tailpipe emissions, we were able to increase the torque and power so that the shifting of gears is reduced. So, in all, it was sort of giving a very, very welcome kind of a thing. We even did it here in uh, India. Uh, when I came back to India and we did an exercise even on Tata Sumo, Tata uh, Estate, then we also did on uh, Mahindra Valero. Uh, we did approach Tata Motors. We had signed an agreement even with Tata Motors uh, quite some years ago. So but, yeah. uh, so the market uh, current scenario is from the regulatory front, the fleet owners, the individual owners, everywhere everybody is challenged in terms of you know addressing these problems and they do not have good solutions inside. Most of the vehicle manufacturers even today are only focused and concentrated on after treatment. That's where you always look at either diesel particulate fi fi filters or ammonia injection, urea injection, whatsoever. So the cost of these technologies are so huge, even Marathi's came recently saying that no, we are not going to continue diesel just because we are not able to uh, you know, uh, get along or align with these kind of costs, but this can solve that. We are able to give an a very affordable solution where they can solve the problem at the source. Mm -hmm. uh, going uh, at our uh, project, uh, market assessment is that uh, you have a very huge, uh, huge size of the market, uh, which even in the market research reports have come out with. That's close to almost about. Uh, uh, 17.5 uh, billion dollars uh, and uh, yeah, the SOM again is what, uh, yeah, uh, serviceable, obtainable market if you look at and what we have taken as our target is a very, very meager 1 to 3 percent, 3 and a half percent of the market and that as well is pretty huge. And if you look at us in India, of course, we have the first mover advantage. As of now, there are no manufacturers of superchargers in India. Across the globe, yes, there are a few. We are about a dozen of us altogether if you put across the world. But uh, I think in the top notch where we actually differentiate ourselves as a different centrifugal supercharger manufacturers is the output speed that we achieve, which is a technically a big advantage, is 85,000 RPM and 1,20,000 RPM. We are probably one of those three in the whole world who have achieved this and who are able to do this. Currently, we are actually doing an exercise on uh, uh, VRL uh, bus. Uh, we already have gone to the market and uh, these are the uh, kind of financials that uh, we have as an output over the seven years that we can achieve. Uh, with whatever meager 150,000 units of capacity that we have considered, probably the kind of the market potential, the capacity that is required is far more beyond than two and a half to three million units a year if you have to address. And even if you look at the end of life of vehicles, which the government repeatedly keeps coming and saying, please deregister 10 years, 15 years, but government doesn't have any solution in sight. We have done such an extensive a uh, sort of analysis on this subject and we have already writing to the Ministry of Transport that given the fact that even Mahindra is what they have now set out to sort of you know recycling about for, with a plant of uh, 40 tons per hour capacity we said multiply by that 12 even if you have installed the kind of capacity 12x you won't be able to solve more than 18% of the problem on hand for the next 15 years so that's the kind of massive problem that we have in India with these old vehicles. So what do we do? Do we live with these vehicles? So we are trying to propose saying that yeah, whatever best we can sort of solve. Similarly, some players in some other ways. So we are trying to fragment this and try and solve this problem the best way that we can. So this 150,000 actually is something which is absolutely peanuts in the market that currently somebody could address this. And in next we would be addressing as a social impact almost about 6.12 million tons of CO2 and fuel of about 1.18 billion dollars saving over seven years. Uh, this is market segmentation. Uh, yes, yeah. uh, this is market strategy. Uh, we have uh, the um, 
Our, our total cost of project is about 112 crores, and we have worked out the kinds of uh, planned out the tranches in which we are sort of looking at. And within that, uh, the ask, question because yeah. I think can we just go to the ask please? Yeah. Okay. Uh, our ask is we just put out that kind of a small this thing from that investment, understanding that this forum of the investors are sort of uh, uh, early, early uh, into that early stage or uh, you know the seed funding uh, kind of uh, level. Uh, our project is, is selected and the shortlisted by PFAN, that's an unit of forum uh, for the funding facilitation. But uh, we are looking at in the meantime to keep moving ahead and progressing. Uh, we have already uh, invested close to about 7 CR in the whole development and getting this to the market. So, we we'll stop there uh, we'll start yes. taking questions. So, yes. Yes. Yeah, so I have just two questions. So, which are the size of vehicle you are looking at? Uh, we could uh, supercharge uh, any uh, vehicle which is either gasoline or uh, diesel from a 1.2 litre engine up to 12 litre engines. But so, it basically water. covers passenger cars, SCVs, LCVs so, as well as FCVs. What about automated uh, automatic transmission then? Certain benefits will not be there, right? No, you will, you will have. Even automatic transmissions, see, automatic transmissions have a tremendous inherent losses in transmission, and the fuel economy is pretty bad because of the, you know, the fuel coupling that it has, torsion coupling. So, the kind of torque that is generated from the engine is what actually decides the, uh, you know, the gear in which it has to go on. So, the torque when we increase, obviously, the gear shifting also reduces. All the percentage of Saving the benefit, is it similar to automatic? Yeah, or the fuel efficiency will continue to remain the same. No, fuel, you still get your fuel efficiency of an original vehicle, an automated vehicle, will improve. Absolutely. And but your emission, emissions. emissions are completely controlled because your automatic transmission has no relation to your emissions. Yes. Okay, so, first of all, the human element which I was saying, yeah. but you were saying emission is what you say. Yeah, of course. Of course. So, then the next question was, you put some percentage, but what is the average reduction of fuel uh, consumption that you are talking about? Well, if you, uh, one, of the case, one of the cases that we ran with uh, three different uh, engine sizes in Germany, even with Mercedes, we were ranging between 18 to even 26 percent. So, it depends on what is your objective of supercharging. See, because uh, when we supercharge, we have the capability of enhancing the top. Pardon me? This is on a smooth road. In Germany? No, no, no. You can start start start. Start. You can. No, no, because you said start stop will help increase uh, benefits. That is what so I was saying. No, no, that, 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 that is the biggest place where you actually generate, uh, you know, right. polluting so, emissions. On a smooth road, what is the reduction? And what, what is the reduction? On a smooth road, also, you will hit at least around about 10%. So the impact will be much higher in Indian kind of road conditions. What you have. Yeah, of course, in, in no, not only Indian conditions, anywhere where you have a stop flow That's kind of a thing, obviously you have a So flow. I understand is 10 to 25 percent is 10 yeah. percent on a smooth yeah. road and 25 percent on a start stop. And what about the area is certification here? In this case? Area is, of course, I've been working with the area for a very long time. So they are now on the same page with us. They are ready to do the time to type testing. Because earlier times they were not even ready to look at me, they always sent us to the OEMs. So that's where we were always. What is the challenge you feel will be there? I don't see anything. I mean, they are very, very progressive. In fact, they have issued out a letter even to sort of to uh, the funding agency saying that uh, this must be funded and we are partnering. We are more than more wanting to collaborate and partner with the uh, project. We have all those documents with us in case you have that. Thanks. That answers my question as well. You will be a prime you know, target for takeover yeah. if at all you want to for Bahian bigger automotive companies. Yeah. So even Arai kind of thing can enforce also through through you saying that this is a double charger, you have the first move advantage. This has to be kind of a way standard with so and so capacity vehicles having so and so fuel and all that. Yeah, that will be the case. What's the cost for this? We're pricing it for the passenger car somewhere in the range of about forty to forty five thousand rupees. And uh, going up to the um, Buses and trucks, it's about 70, 75,000 rupees. And so, are they uh, For the buses and all that, uh, if you look at the kind of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, for the passenger cars, I think it will be close to around about three, four years' time. Uh, I mean, a very, very um, uh, meager uh, kind of, you know, travel. Uh, yeah, very uh, pessimistic uh, mileage. Yes, mileage. Yes. I think once again, like others, you have to look at uh, uh, high driven cars. Yeah, this exactly. is what it is. Fleet owners. If you look at the trucks, 
you would uh, recover the entire investment in about two and a half months. Uh, the USP for this, when you ask, I mean, if you really look at in the sort of details as to, uh, we have uh, developed uh, uh, the special process of manufacturing that very high precision gear, which is the DIN 4 class gear, uh, with one of the European manufacturer, and uh, that's the only only supplier across the globe, and we have more or less have uh, already entered into an agreement that fine tuning is required where I think for the next four years you would not be able to supply this machine to anybody else. So without this, you won't be able to achieve these results at all. Even if someone were to sort of say, let's say, invest. So that's one place. But by design itself, I think it's quite difficult. I mean, we have ourselves taken close to 15 years of a struggle to really make this refine and come to this point. Your first phase requires 45 crores, but you're good with 8 to 10 crores. No, that's a start the point. So that's what I said. Since this forum, we uh, 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 about this POC is successful, and they say, how much would you require in terms of uh, money to start up the whole thing? What is that way? Sense? That way, yes. I mean, for me, uh, best case, thousands. No? Yeah. They see, uh, even, even, even with yeah. 10, to, 10, 10 to 15 crores, we could manage, but then see the situation would be that there is no uh, supplier in the country or there is no facility in the country which could make those particular two, three specific components. I need to again go back to Germany where I have already made. Of course, I have had that association since I was associated with them. Now I need to procure from them. Uh, I mean, it's an expensive affair. And logistics wise, we would not like to. So the other side of the focus is making India is another big focus. Just last month while I was in Germany, I sort of, uh, there's one particular component to this, a critical component, which also we sort of came to an understanding that yes, he will come along with us to actually make this in Bangalore and not that I would have to import it from them. So they will come along with us, set up a separate subsidiary to supply that to us. So we are also focused to make it more in India. So you want the paper price? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, there are about, Three more patents which are in the pipeline, I think uh, last minute. Yeah, so if you say if you say you are in the in the model, do you think your business is fit for the Indian model? Because this kind of things with invest it's actually you need a strategic investor or a strategic uh, dealing like with Uber, Ula or something like that, you know, or go to the bank. Unless you tied up with the complete consortium of 120 crore more. What is the meaning of the eight crore, ten crore? No, I mean, 120 crore, 112 crores is, you know, phase one. See, everything you can't get. Phase one, you will get by phases only. You will not get one, Correct. one go one second. But then implementation is phase one. Unless you go for 120 crore, that 120 crore will require a strategic investor for a strategic deal with somebody. Obviously, uh, but again, even if you have... I think for agile investing, I don't think this kind of any agile investor puts money for this. Unless he sees those agreements. I would, I would love to put my right hand pro. If I see that we have signed those agreements, otherwise that, this money goes. No, that's why, that's why. See, we are already in negotiation and uh, already sort of the mentoring is taking place by this unit of forum PFAN. That's what All the kind of larger uh, tranche uh, of uh, until investment. Then, until then, it's actually in looking for angel funding and actually wrong. And you have a VC funds and all, you will not go for it. No, we are not looking at from that perspective. We are looking at, see, uh, there are lots of activities which need time. And, uh, you know, we go on building this. Oh. So, we are not looking at, you know, at one shot in one bag that you have, then we start, that yes. cannot be done. See, Financial uh, process is good. Yeah, yeah we, we will, we will progressively make it, we will progressively make it. Because yeah. you are not able to get to the point. See, the objective of financial closure would be better, we believe. Uh -huh. We believe the objective of financial closure would be better if we get this kind of uh, intermediate stage funding. And if you are able to demonstrate, you are able to build up brick over brick continuously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 If they come from this mining and power plant, yeah. when you put a seven thousand megawatt plant, okay, once you have the PP, you have the land clearance and all the things, then you go with the consortium of them. That is different. That is different. For example, now if you look at total picture, I can't put parts on it. If you look at eight, eight to ten crores, eight to ten crores. If you see my slides, we are already able to sell about five hundred superchargers to the US market. My revenue stream start already in this. Well, you should ideally take time with Saroj for two reasons. One is for the making the point both sides understood and two, he is very connected in the mining space. He comes from that industry for the last 30 years. So he can also bring you the investors and the customers. 
So you should. Okay. Uh, it could be first customer turned investor also. Okay. Yeah. 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 Pardon? So we're just going to replace the turbo part, right? No, we're not going to replace the turbo part. We actually use the both best of both. We, wherever there are turbocharged engines, we keep turbocharger, we call it as twin charging. So we actually bring the best of supercharging and best of turbocharger. When turbocharger operates, it's definitely good at that zone. We're not going to take up this uh, turbocharger. But for petrol vehicles where it's not turbocharged, we supercharge and they're full. Because currently I had a Fiat Punto where it was like one of the best selling engines, what Maruti, Tata, JD, everyone has been supplied the same one. So here I've changed my turbo to a supercharged turbo, which we had in Arctica and all. Because you have FZK and VZK. It's a geometrical turbo and variable geometrical turbo. So when I change, I've changed the tuning also. I went through with teach and all because what can see? No, you, 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 you can't do that. You can't do that. <laughs> okay, thank you so thank much. You so much. Uh, thank you so much. 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 Those two? Yeah? And anybody else? We like you. Yeah, you just... Yeah.